bedroom Bayview built-ins. Oh, Rexna. What's Rexna? Recreation room sauna bath. That means it's at least three bills. Well, that's it. There hadn't been anything I could even afford to look at for three months. I just remembered. My cousin Norma's neighbor. She's moving out in about three months. I'll check it out for you. Well, it's too late to tear my building down in two weeks. This town's getting worse in New York for apartments. Well, I told you, you could move in with us. Stay where? In the bathtub? Left, right here. He'll swallow it. He's gonna choke. He can't swallow it if he won't open his mouth. Come on, Tommy. May we up. tickle him? He's not ticklish, Tommy. Come on, darling. I, I, I won't hurt you, I promise. I just want to look in your throat. Come on. Tommy, if you don't behave, I'm going to tell the doctor to give you a shot. Please, Mrs. Werner. He's frightened enough as it is. Need any help, doctor? Oh, no thank you, doctor. We can manage. Come on, come on, let's get back there, huh? Now, let's hold it back there. Uh, no, that's the water pipe, then. Uh, I mean, there's no law against uh, smoking a pipe, right? All right, it just depends on what you smoke in it. Look, man, I'm clean, all right? I mean, look, there's no tracks. You can give me a breath test. You're going to skin search me here in the no. street. I want to know, how come you don't inform me about my constitutional rights? Because you're not being charged with anything. Uh, you mean you, you believe me? I believe you're skid mark. I don't know, man. It's just shaping up to be a very weird day. I mean, first, my landlord evicts me from my apartment. Then the guy that I'm renting the trailer from, wait he minute. thinks I'm trying to rip him yeah, off. Yeah, right. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. The, the, uh, did you say you were evicted from your apartment? Yeah. Evicted. I mean, is that legal, man? I mean, we didn't get any advance notice or anything. Just Listen, what what thing. kind of apartment is it? I don't it? want any hippies living here. I mean... Hippies, man, where has he been? Hey, listen, now, where is the no. apartment? Where, has, has anybody else moved into it yet? No, not that I know of. Man. How much are you paying? Sixteen fifty. I mean, you're pretty weird. Sixteen fifty. Sixteen a week? No, a month, man. There are twelve of us. An apartment? Yeah, I pass it on the way in. They're just putting up the sign. Why don't you take it right out? I'll spell you. Oh, gee, thanks, Howie. Yeah, there's strings attached. You get the apartment. I get a dinner date. Don't you ever give up? A beautiful woman in the women's liberation movement is a challenge to me. Before you came along, I thought they were all army sergeants. Howie, men like you are what women's lib is all about. Hmm. Center 1 and 201M. Joe's on his way in with a tow truck. Joe, I'm going to check out that apartment. Thank right, you. May I see your license, please? Look, officer, I'm in a terrible hurry. Obviously. License. I don't please. know what you think I did, but you can take all the information you need from here while Out I go wallet, into that please. building. Uh, you, you see, I'm a doctor. This an emergency? 
Well, yeah, yes, of a sort. Well, let's go. Oh, wait a minute, officer. You don't have to come with me. You might need help. Well, it's, uh, it's not a medical emergency. Um, all right, miss, I'm gonna let you off with a warning this time, but you ought to be more careful. You're a beautiful girl. Can't think of a quicker way to lose your looks than getting smacked broadside because you ran a red light. Just a minute, officer. Am I to understand you're not giving me this ticket just because I'm a woman? No, you're not to understand that. Well, you said I ran a red light. Oh, well, yes, you did. Well, I didn't. It was yellow, but that's not the point. I think if I were a man, you'd have that ticket all filled out by now. I beg your pardon? I think if I were a black man, you'd have me spread-eagled against that car. Look, Miss, uh, excuse me, Dr. Bowers, I thought you were in a hurry. Do you want me to write you a ticket? I don't want any special treatment because of my sex. Doctor, with your looks, if you don't want any special treatment from men, I think you'd better enter a convent. Now, if you want to believe I was corrupted by your beauty, go right ahead. I'm a corrupt cop. No, you're not. You're just a sexual bigot. Okay, you win. Come on. What? Up against the car, pause flat, feet spread, wider, move. What? Up against the car, come on. What are you doing? No sexual differences here, doctor. Equal treatment for all. Uh, excuse me, would you step over here a moment? Me? Yes, ma'am, please. Is she a dangerous criminal? You never can tell. I'd like you to search her, please. How dare you? Ah, 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 palms flat, feet spread, search her, please. Just run your hands up over her clothes, look for suspicious bulges, concealed weapons. Oh! 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 Ah, ah. No concealed weapons, but she has lots of bulges. Yes, ma'am. What did she do? Ran a red light. Thank you, you've been a great help, ma'am. You can turn around now. If you think you're going to get away uh, with this... Ah, uh, ah, uh, no tears. Now, men don't cry just because their dignity gets ruffled. You, you're just like all men. A woman stands up for a rise, you get hostile. Place of business. Look, he's giving her a ticket. And I frisked her. I was scared to death. Now what? Not a thing. You don't look here, do you? I see. First you brutalize and degrade me, then you give me a ticket I don't deserve. Now I suppose you're going to ask me for a date. Dr. Bowers, if you really worked at it, I think you could develop into a full-blown paranoid. <laughs> I'm just going to look at an apartment for rent. You can't. It's mine. Did you rent it already? Yes. Yes, yeah, yes. This morning it's taken. Dr. Bowers, you are a liar. Well, all right, all right, I didn't. But I'm going to, right now. Well, anyway, I got here first. Only because you broke the law. I'd Good like afternoon, to see you have an apartment. Now look, officer, I don't want any trouble. As soon as they found out what was going on, I threw them out. The place is empty. You can see for yourself. Excuse me, I'm the one that... First the complaint I got, I went right up there. Hate to tell you what I found. There were 12 of them. Hippies, every one. I'm afraid you don't understand, Mr. Uh... Sorensen. Warren Sorensen. Former U.S. Infantry. Veteran of foreign wars. Support your local police. I got the sticker right on the bumper. I don't want any trouble. You can Mr. See... Sorensen, I'd like to see the Now, just a minute, young lady. I got to straighten things out with this officer. There's nothing to straighten out. We both want to see the apartment. Uh, to rent it. Oh, oh, well, well, that's different. Stove and refrigerators included. <clears throat> you even got a view of the bay from the bathroom window if you crane your neck. Pretty little wife you got there, sir. Well, there it is, folks. Best value in town. Perfect for young marrieds. You know what the apartment situation is. You don't take it, plenty will. You discuss it among yourselves. I'll be downstairs. Now, look, officer, uh, whatever your name is. Frazier. Jerry Frazier. The first thing we have to do is clear up this humiliating misunderstanding. Well, why humiliating? We both knocked on the door at the same time, so naturally assume we were married. Well, it's humiliating to me. Oh, I see. It's the institution of marriage that's humiliating. I should have figured. 
I want this apartment, Officer Fraser. So do I, Dr. Bowers. Look, I can't wrestle you two falls out of three, so why don't we go someplace and discuss it over a cup of coffee? A Dutch. Right. There's a couple upstairs now deciding. If they don't take it... We'll take it. Who'll take it? We'll decide later. Well, you heard what they said. I think that's a wise decision you made there, folks. By the way, I never did catch the name. Bowers. Mr. and Mrs. Bowers, I think you're going to be very happy here. Why did you bring me here? This is a fight, not a date. And I like beautiful battleground. Did you ever see Gettysburg? It's gorgeous. Yeah, you don't talk much like a cop. You don't look much like a doctor. Well, let's get on with it. I am a doctor, a resident in pediatrics at SF General. I work long hours, and I do not have time to look for an apartment. Neither do I. But besides working full-time for the force, I go to law school. That means study and classes. And two cappuccinos, please. Why did you do that? Do what? Order the coffee without at least doing me the courtesy of asking me what I wanted first. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want something else? Oh, no. I like cappuccino, but that's not, not the point. Not the point. I understand. If you were a man, I'd have asked you. Mm. If you were a man, I Maybe wouldn't have pulled the chair out for you. Mm. If you were a man, I'd have written you the ticket right off. Yeah. Dr. Bowers, didn't you hear the lady who searched you? You got bulges. Oh, Eric! Oh, 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 Alive. I'm a bird oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Let go of me. Dr. Bowers. Jane, Dr. Bowers, you can have the apartment. Oh, 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 that's marvelous. First you treat me like some kind of witless ninny, and then you want to make up by offering me a present. Don't you want the apartment? Well, of course I want the apartment. Look. Can't you get it through your thick policeman's skull that I do not accept favors just because I'm a woman? Okay, what do we do? Well, we, uh, we discuss it. And, and we, we decide on the basis of need, not on the basis of sex. Fair enough. Okay? Okay. Okay. I've been looking for three months and haven't found a thing. Now I go on night shift. Oh, good. That means you can, you can look all day. I do have to sleep. Oh, yeah. Well, looks like we're both equally in need. What do we do now? I suggest we side the side scientifically. Tails. Mommy, Mommy, I found Kenny. Good, Kevin. Hi, son. That's my plan. Leave him alone. He found it. We well, can have it, ma'am. We'd just like to see it. A poor bet. But we flipped it. All right, Kevin, show the policeman the penny. Head. Congratulations. Here's your penny, son. I don't want your penny anyway. My dad thinks policeman... Let's go, Kevin. Doctor? I can't take it. Why not? You won the toss. I just wouldn't feel right. Oh, with that Now, just hear me out, please. I guess it's just ladies first. That's the way I was brought up. I open doors, I pull out chairs, I lift heavy boxes. You know, I really don't understand you women's live ladies who want to be just like men. As far as I'm concerned, you're a woman, period. You're softer and prettier and weaker than I am. So I'm giving you a part. My grandmother was a personal friend of Carrie Chapman Cat. The suffragette. When women got the vote in 1920, my mother was 10, and she, she, she marched in the victory parade. 
For as long as I can remember, I was taught that women are absolutely equal to men. Now, that's how I was brought up, and I don't intend to change now. The apartment is yours. This is pretty silly, you know. We both want the apartment, and we're too pig-headed to accept it. Well, I, I don't call having principles being pig-headed. Well, what well, are we doing gonna... now? All right, neither of us will take it. Come on, let's tell Storms. You mean live there together? Not together, separate. Look, 200 a month is more than I wanted to pay, but I was willing because the place is perfect. If we split the rent, it'd be easy. I thought I was a sexual bigot. Boy, are you full of surprises. You're not. You're absolutely predictable. Just because I suggest we share an apartment, you assume I'm offering to go to bed with you. I'm not. You said you were going on the night shift? Well, I work days. We'd hardly ever be in the apartment at the same time. Oh, forget it. Forget it. I thought for once in your life you might be able to look at a girl as something other than a sex object. What about friends? Now, I happen to have a girl I do think of as a sex object. Oh, well, I have friends, too. We'd make a schedule. It's ridiculous. We hardly know each other. Jerry, for just one minute, think of me as an equal. I'm trying. We'd go our separate ways. We don't even have to like each other. Separate, but equal. Hey, you smiled. Well, you said something funny. Are you sloppy or neat? Semi-sloppy. I'm semi-neat. Deal? Deal. Excuse me. Well, is she a dangerous criminal or not? By this time, you should know. <laughs> criminal, no. Uh, dangerous? I'm not so sure. I'm sharing an apartment with a cop lawyer, sexual bigot, boy scout. Hmm, <laughs> talk about the odd couple. Oh, no, 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 that's all right, I understand. Well, I've got all that packing to do anyway. Hey, listen, Wyatt, I think we're going to need a trailer. I had no idea I had so much junk. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Nine o'clock, my place, Sunday. Goodbye, darling. Oh, congratulations again. Bushwa, Dr. Unadulterated Bushwa. She's my patient. You assigned her to me. Now you're trying to interfere with treatment. Treatment? Yes, yeah, treatment. Right, treatment. I do. The girl has a slight asthma condition, which might be psychological in origin. Not might be is. Well, that doesn't make her a candidate for depth analysis. A female identity crisis at the age of nine for the love of... Well, hello there, Ingrate. If you two want to put on the gloves, why don't you step into my office? Listen, Lassiter, how would you know if she has an identity crisis? You don't even think females have identities. Finglefinger, you are a living, breathing argument for female slavery. Oh, you sexist! Sexless! Dr. Ward, go to five... Don't apologize, Dr. Barnes. I'm still mad at you. Dr. Ward, you go to five, six, one, That Howard Lassiter! What was that cutesy stuff about him being mad at you? Oh, he found me an apartment, and I refused to return the favor by going out to dinner with him. You see? They're all the same. They do a favor for you, they expect you to return it. Dinner costs a couple of kisses and a good mauling. And if they do you the really big favor of marrying you, they expect you to spend the rest of your life doing dishes and changing diapers. Women are nothing more than hired help. Oh, come on, Debbie. All men aren't like that. Look at Wyatt. Your fiancé? Mr. Super Liberal Labor Lawyer, <laughs> the three big L's. All he wants is to get kicked. That's not fair. Wyatt's done more for women's live than either of us. 
And he's helped a lot of other causes, too. He just won a big civil rights case. Uh, listen, can we have our meeting at your house Tuesday night? Gee, I don't know, Debbie. I, I don't think I'm really militant enough for your group. Nobody ever got anything by being reasonable. You've got to have power. And like the bumper sticker says, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Well, which are you? Tuesday night. Right on! Absolute groove. Congratulations. <laughs> the boyfriend. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, but $200 a month, five years ago, was half that much. This town is ripe for a rent strike. Wyatt, I'm tickled to get it. Come on, I'll show you around. This is my bedroom. <laughs> Closet. Oh, and there's even a view over here. Nice cupboard. Don't you think it has charm? Two hundred dollars a month. Are utilities included? Wyatt, you're doing it again. What? Being the people's advocate, champion of the underprivileged, lawyer for the downtrodden. But, Janie, don't you realize we have a, an opportunity here? I could take out a class action on behalf of the... Wyatt, stop it. Darling, I brought you here to see my new apartment. I'd like a little enthusiasm, not a treatise on gouging landlords. You're right, I'm definitely uncool, inappropriate, insensitive to mood. I, I don't know what you see in me. You really want to know? I see a warm, considerate man who treats me like a person, not just someone with bulges. Come on, I'll show you the view from the bathroom. Bathroom, wonderful. You can even see the bay. Oh, more closets. Bathroom? Huh? See? Everything you could possibly want. Oh, shower. Oh, cute. But the biggest selling point of all is over here. Now, you have to tilt your head just, just a little, but you can actually see the bay. Oh, wow, there it is. Uh, excuse me. What are you doing there? Oh, hello there. Uh, uh, building inspector, checking access to the fire escapes. Uh, Jerry, this is Wyatt Foley, my fiancé. Wyatt, this is Jerry Fraser, my uh, roommate. <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, great to meet you, Jer. Uh, Janie told me you're a policeman. Are you also a building inspector? Wyatt, help him in. <laughs> gotcha. No, that's, that's all right. That's all right. <sighs> it's a great place you got here, Jer. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Uh, say, uh, what were you doing out there? I mean, this stuff about building inspectors to put on, right? Jerry uh, didn't know you were in on our little arrangement, so he was saving me from an embarrassing situation. <laughs> oh, it's not like that at all, Jerry. Uh, Janie and I, we don't have any secrets from each other. Complete honesty, complete trust. <laughs> she told me right away about how you found this place, the ticket and all. It's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you approve. Oh, I haven't got the right to approve or disapprove any more than Janie would have the right to pass on my roommate, right? Right. Do you uh, live with a girl, too? No, I live with my mother, a very groovy lady. Huh. Listen, I'm going to go down and get another load. You two get better acquainted. I'll be, I'll be right back. Isn't she something? Yeah. 
I'll tell you, these women's lib ladies are a new breed of cat. I'm still having trouble with the old breed of cat. Mr. Building Inspector? Very funny, Jane. Listen. I hope you're feeling sufficiently foolish. Me? Listen, Miss Emancipation, if I was your fiancé, I'd have punched your, your roommate right in the snout. Ah, well, there's the difference. Wyatt is a decent, sensitive, understanding person, and you are a chest-beating, hysterically masculine gorilla. Thank you. If he's so perfect, why don't you marry him? Oh, I fully intend to. When? <laughs> when? When? Well, uh, that's none of your business. Aha! Jane, do me a favor. Wait ten seconds, then pretend you don't know me. Kitty! Surprise! Happy uh, moving day. Mm, well, thank you, man. Wait, look. For you. Oh, <laughs> that is really something. I had one made exactly like the one at the club. It's for right over your bed. Ah, that's just so, oh, it's super, honey. It's just so marvelous. I can't over the bed, though. I mean, how am I going to get any sleep? It's not supposed to let you sleep, silly. It's supposed to keep you awake thinking about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I don't know. Probably just some lady with a very bad cold. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see your apartment. Which one? Up here? Uh, not today, honey. The place is such a mess. Oh, but I to be a mess. I want to clean and dust and sew your curtains and fix coffee and all those girly things. It sounds perfect, but not today, honey. Hi, Mr. Bowers. Moving day, huh? Yes, sir. Moving day. You bet, sir. Right, sir. Mr. Yes, sir. Bowers. Hmm? What? He called you Mr. Bowers. He did? Uh, hey, Jeff. Mr. Bowers. Hello, Mr. Bowers. I'd like to meet Kitty Murdoch. Kitty Murdoch, this is Mr. Bowers, my neighbor. Hi, are you moving in, too? Uh, well, uh, no, uh, not exactly. That no, he's it. just moving out, and so are we. Hello, Mr. Uh, Sorensen. Yes, sir. Yes. Jerry, I came all the way over here just to see your apartment. Ah, uh, not today, honey. Uh, we're going to celebrate my new apartment at your old apartment. Bye. Yes. Uh, bye. Bye. <laughs> Aren't you going to help her? Oh, yeah. Here, hold this. Is this the kind of adolescent nonsense I have to look forward to? The first thing we do when we move in is make a schedule. You gonna finish that today? Because after I go on night shift, we won't be seeing much of each other. There he is. <sighs> you got anything else to add? Now's the time. All right. Uh, budget. Rent. Utilities. Cleaning and laundering separately. Use part loan 50-50. Bathroom schedule. Um, that's a very professional job. For a woman. Oh, brother, here we go again. Well, can't you even accept a compliment without getting defensive? Okay, folks, here she is. Enjoy your phone. Thank you very much. It was implied in what you said. Very professional job for a woman. All right, I take back the implication. It's a brilliant schedule. It is a work of art. An efficiency expert could not have done it better. Except for one thing. What if that's for me? What if it is? Well, you may be Miss Modern, tell the world, but I'm not. Four seven four three nine nine eight. Who is calling, please? Oh, just a moment. I'll see if I can reach her. Hello, Daddy. Oh, oh, oh no. That that um, that was my answering service. Uh, uh, Oh, Daddy. Daddy, don't be surprised if a man answers sometimes. He and his wife run the service. Ah, Mr. Sorensen. What about this uh, nameplate for the mailbox? It says, Fraser Bowers. Who's Fraser? Huh? Oh, it's a lovely place, Daddy. Oh, no, no, I have a roommate. Uh, we're newlyweds. My wife still gets mail on her maiden name. I'll try to get down and see you in a couple of weeks. Take care of yourself, Daddy, hmm? Bye-bye. Well, I... I guess there are a couple of loose ends. Hey! Hey! 
strange in their first lesson. Go on, let's go. Do uh, old ballet exercise. Oh. oh! What's the matter? Is it broke? Ah, nah. It's a little bit of blood. Come on. Sit down. Go on, go on. I'll be all right. Yeah? Go on. Good, I don't want to cool off. Hey! Ah! Oh, ah! Directions. Tell them to the judge, Lila. What time is it? 10.20. Oh, wouldn't you know? They closed the kitchen at the station at 10 and I haven't eaten. I'm starving. Tell Sergeant Harvey at the desk. He'll send out for a hamburger. Oh, that guy was going to buy me dinner. Hey, so it's working out okay, huh? Oh, perfect. Perfect. It's like having the place alone. I haven't seen her for three days since we went on night shift. Well, what about Kitty? Does she know? She does not. Well, how are you going to keep her away? I'm not. She's cooking dinner for me on my first night off. <laughs> oh, boy, that's great. Not enough you're a cop. You have to live dangerously at home, too. Keeps you young, Joe. <laughs> hey, why don't we stop at Mario's for pizza on the way in? I'll buy. <laughs> Lila, why don't you get a day job? When would I see? missing a stocking. Oh, it's in the flower pot on the coffee table. Sorry.
You blew a fuse. Now, what do you expect? Your iron and try to use the hair dryer at the same time. 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 For generally clear hair weather with coastal fog in the evening and early morning. Kenny, hell and well. How about afternoon. that? My gracious. Oh, now what's happened? Go again, folks. Here. Huh? Well, what's going uh, on? Uh, no, no, I have yes, that's right, yes, right. Don't panic. I'm sure the authorities will have the situation well in hand. I'm sorry, I ain't late for work. Oh, wait, I don't know. Picketing's no good. Look, unless we break the law, they ignore us. Oh, yeah, right. right. Some yeah. snide little article on page 12 of the paper. Exactly. Isn't it? Well, then we have to break the law. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, we can't. 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 We can not 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 we
What? No, I didn't say anything. Oh, well, I thought you, you were looking at me. No, 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 don't pay any attention. I'll, I'll be looking at everybody like this for a couple of days. You see, I, I can't move my neck. Jerry, I'm oh. sorry. I had no idea you'd be coming home. Oh, well, it's, it's my fault entirely. You see, I, I switched shifts. Why didn't you tell me? Uh, leave a note or something. I thought I'd surprise you. Have a nice, quiet little dinner. Even got a bottle of wine. It's good wine, too. It's, it's all gone now. Does it really hurt? Uh, uh, a lot, lot less than it did before I finished the wine. Turn around. Oh, you're going to finish me off. No, no, no. Just turn around. Is it there? Oh, it's everywhere. Yeah. Oh. oh, who hit me anyway? She built like a fullback. Debbie Inglefinger. Inglefinger. Yeah. Mm, she's a child psychiatrist at the clinic. Well, that, that figures. I want to thank you for not telling her you live here. Yeah, well, why didn't you tell her? I mean, you told good old Wyatt. Well, um... Debbie's the leader of WHAM. Oh, WHAM? Mm. Women against men. She, she wouldn't understand. Mm -mm. Oh, that feels good. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, they teach you this in medical school? No. <laughs> my father's a chiropractor. Really? Mm. Hey, mine's, mine was a milkman. Really? Don't stop. Well, I, 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 I can't uh, in this position. Sure you can. to a wonderful man. He's, he's, he's perfect for me in every way. I, I have it all figured out. You... You're everything I'm against. the sea of you in the bay. It's good, huh? Hey, this um, wham thing, uh, women against men, you remember? Not, not really. I, I just let them use the apartment. Debbie's always trying to recruit me, but, uh, well, they're, they're pretty militant, you know. Yeah, tell me. Does it still hurt? Well, if I say yes, do I get another massage? Just friends, promise. <sighs> to friendship. Oh, this, this, I got the hand. Jerry, that is absolutely the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Well, that may be true, but it's very smart. Every half hour it goes... Cool, cool. Huh? Come on, let's buy it. Well, well, Jerry, we don't need a clock like that. Well, that's true, but that's what makes it fun. Twenty-five dollars? Well, a little bargaining wouldn't hurt. You know, a little bargaining. We'd get them down to twenty and split it, ten each. What if one of us moves out? Well, um, bong, bong, split it up. I'll take AM, you take PM. mm, -mm, -mm. I'll take AM, you take PM. You have the night shift. Oh. 
I promised Debbie that I... Oh, another yeah. meeting with the crazy ladies. Uh, Jerry, I want you to understand something. I owe Debbie a great big favor. When I applied for residency here, the women's quota was full. Well, don't look so surprised. I told you women were discriminated against. Anyway, Debbie made such a big stink, they took me on just to shut her up. Is that why you're in women's lib? Out of gratitude? Because it still doesn't make sense to me. You're intelligent, well-educated, you're in a high-paying, respected profession. You forgot one thing. I'm pretty. You didn't let me finish. Thank you. But I didn't always look like this. Do you know I didn't have a date till I was 19? Oh, I used to join all the clubs. Helped everybody with their homework, anything. But I never got asked out. And then I sort of blossomed. Suddenly I didn't have to be little Miss Helpful anymore. I could be rude, sarcastic, even downright nasty, and they still kept coming. Do you know the only way I could turn a man off? By letting him see how smart I was. I'll tell you, that sort of thing can give you a pretty good fix on what men value. Do you think women's lib can change what men value? No, but it might change the women. It might give them a sense of their own worth that's based on something more, more important than just a turned up nose and a big chest. Okay, go to your meeting. Maybe we can make it next week. Jerry, I I'm telling you all this because I'm beginning to care what you think of me. And no matter what happens, I don't want you to think of me as one of those crazy ladies. What are you planning to do tonight? Rob a bank? Not exactly. Women of San Francisco! Wham has a message for you! <laughs> if you want to know what Wham means... Ladies, please, please, please! Women against... Ladies. You can't do this. You're disturbing our guests. You can't do this. Ladies, you can't. You can't. You can't. Ladies, please. Oh. Did you all see that? Did everybody see that? I want you to know that is what we're going to do to anyone who tries to exploit us. Right? Message received. We're on our way. Hey, Jerry, come on. Let's move it. Best call we've had in weeks. Playboy Club. <laughs> Take it for granted. I'm with you. You come back here. Hey, you let her go. She's mine. Mine, 
Kellogg and quick. No. Yes. Jerry, if you do this, we're finished. I mean it. We're finished. Don't listen to anything she says. She's mentally unstable. Remember, oh. I got your number. Here. Oh, no, no, no. Go. Yes. Don't. Yes. Don't. Daddy, it's Jane. I'm sorry to waken you. I... Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing's wrong. I, I just... I just had to talk to somebody, that's all. Well, um... It's, uh... It's kind of hard to explain. <sighs> that's silly. I, I thought I'd be able to tell you that. I, I can't. No, no, don't, don't come up. Uh, I, I'll... I'll I'll come down next weekend and... No, really, really, it, it's, it's nothing serious. I'm all right. I, I'm just, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm a little confused, that's all. Mm. My roommate? Oh, uh, she, she's um, okay, I guess. Yeah. Please, Daddy, don't worry. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you. My roommate. Roommate. 
I'm the Racer. I'm right here. Lila? What are you doing here? Why would you to arrest me? <laughs> Any particular charge? Oh, I don't know. Um, how about a decent exposure? Stop, stop that. Just cut it out. Now, what's going on? I'm in trouble. Well, getting arrested isn't the usual solution. Get out. I don't. Come on over to the car and tell me about it. What's the matter? Are you hurt? No, I threw my back out. It's okay. That's how it all started. Just a sec. So anyway, listen. The thing, the way it started is I was saying to Charlie, I said, look, I threw my back out. I don't want to work, you know. Wait a minute. Who's Charlie? Charlie's my producer. Oh, he's going to make me an X-rated movie star. Isn't that nice? Yeah. What was I saying? Well, Charlie says, yeah, i got to work, you know, and I don't want to. And then you know what he did to me? Yeah. He belted me. Well, listen, here, I don't need that kind of thing, you know. So oh, I, I, I grabbed my coat and there's a split, you know, you know. So I uh, not exactly goes for the coat, Julian. <laughs> That's true, but I don't have a nickel in my pocket. Hmm. Oh, Lila, what am I going to do with you? Arrest me, I told you. You busted me six times before. Yeah, for soliciting. Listen, I'll solicit. Just get in the car. If I took you in with that story, they'd laugh me right out of the precinct. <laughs> yeah, and if they did book you, with your record, you'd get 30 days. Oh, now, just stop it, will you? Come on, I'll buy a cup of coffee and we'll figure this thing out. Like this? Oh, now, stop it, Lila. The drive-in, I'll keep that thing closed. Here, you can wear these and uh, sleep in there. These are girls' pajamas. I didn't know you were married. Just put them on. I'll be back later this afternoon with your clothes. Until then, don't answer the telephone, don't let anybody in, and I'll see what I can do about finding you a job. Fantastic. A day job. Day job. Or rustle you up a couple of bucks or something. In there. In there. Dear Jerry, I suppose I could try to explain why I never want to see you again, but frankly, I, I don't think you'd understand. Let's just say that all the things I thought about you when we first met turned out to be true. You proved that last night. I'll be out of the apartment by this evening, and I'd appreciate it if you'd stay away between 6 and 8 when I'll be packing. Jerry. I think this is absolutely great of you. Go to sleep. Oh, I just wanted to tell you, I think you're one heck of a nice guy. Bread and butter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vacancies. Apartment 6. I don't think anyone's there, but I'd like to get in. I'm Jane's father. Don't ordinarily do this, but seeing as how you're her father... I appreciate it. You don't have to worry none about your daughter in this building, but decent, hard-working, God-fearing tenants, every one of them. I'm sure they are. Nice girl, Jane, old-fashioned. Matter of fact, she holds sewing circles here Tuesday nights. Thank you. Sewing circles? Jane? Must be the roommate. I'm not surprised she's in jail for nothing else than having the incredible bad taste to let that body be seen in that outfit. I mean, you're a women's liberation type, right? I don't see you parading around. I was there in a bikini. Oh, well, I'm 
Sorry, I missed it. <laughs> you were there, huh, Dr. Lassiter? Yes. It's for you. Dr. Bowers? Daddy, where are you? Your apartment. The landlord let me in. My apartment? Is, uh, uh, is anybody else there? Nope, just me. Nice place you got here. Go home. Uh, well, uh, I'll be right there, Daddy. Bye-bye. You're in no condition to see patients anyway. Thanks, Howard. But you're still a louse. Doctor! One day you're going to come to your senses and appreciate me for the sweet, considerate, sexy man that we both know I am. Hi! Dr. Robert Crow, nurse's station, fifth floor, please. She's making a big mistake. Hello. You must be... Lila. Boy, that Jerry. When he promises you something, he really delivers. Jerry? Who's Jerry? Oh, it doesn't matter. Listen, I'll fix myself up, and I'll be right with you. Hmm. She doesn't look much like the sewing circle type, either. Jane? Jane, darling. Oh, wow. Huh? Is it true? Did you really mean what you said this morning? Yes, why? Yes, I, I think so. Okay, I want you to know that there is no pressure, none whatsoever. Mother understands the situation completely. She even said you can use a bedroom. Oh, that's nice. Oh, Wyatt, what about Debbie and the others? I went down. As soon as you call, I think I'll have them released in about an hour. Oh, good. Darling, I have to go. My father's home. Bye-bye now. Wait a minute. Slow down, Tiger. Let a girl get a cup of coffee. Oh, easy. <laughs> it hurts. What are you doing? You said you threw your back out. I was putting it back in. I'm a chiropractor. It's all gone. It doesn't hurt anymore. I think it's fair. <laughs> Good. Mm. Tell me, Lila, how did you and Jane... Oh, you know, that's fantastic. I say I hurt my back and then stop. Jerry sends somebody here to fix it. Say, <clears throat> do you know about me? No, but I'd like to. How you two got together. Well, we've been friends for a long time. Sort of on a professional basis. You're a doctor? No, I'm a X-rated movie star. <laughs> well, I, not really, but I will be. Charlie says I will as soon as we finish this movie, and it's terrific! Do you know I don't even have to act? I just do what comes naturally. <laughs> and we work right out of the apartment. You work out of this apartment? Listen, you look like you could use some coffee. Relax. Maybe after, I'll do some scenes for you. Dr. Jane Bowers, please. Oh, do you know where she can be reached? Uh, try her home. Uh, she went there to see her father. Fine, thank you. Hello? Uh, who is this, please? This is Dr. Horace Bowers. Who is this? Dr. Bowers, is Dr. Bowers there? I mean, uh, is Jane there? Oh, no, she isn't. Is, um... Is anybody else there? Oh, it's for you. Hi, Jer! Oh, he fixed me all up. Well, that cute old guy you sent over in the doctor's great. Jer. Well, never mind. Come on over here. Lila, I oh, really you have to ask for? you some questions. Oh, one of those, huh? How a nice girl like me and all that. You know, I usually get that from college boys, but that's all right, fire away. No, no, that's not what I mean. You see, I'm feeling a little stunned by all this. You mean you... Oh, you do look a little green. Well, never mind. You just get comfortable. I'll take your jacket well, no, off. Well, I no, don't, I don't want to take my... Well, you'll be more comfortable. What I'm doing? Here, now. Lila, please, I'm Jane's father. Well, that's okay. She won't mind. Daddy! Daddy, what are you doing? Hello, Jane, dear. I was just explaining to Lila and here. And who are you? Well, he just told you I'm Lila. <gasps> you must Wait be a minute. I... Am I to understand that you two don't know each other? I never saw her before in my life. Except that she's wearing my pajamas. 
Oh, I really appreciate it, too. Actually, I sleep in the nude, but Jerry insisted. Daddy, are you all right? Jane, dear, for most of your life, I have permitted you to do what you wanted. I've sometimes wondered whether I was doing the right thing, but never so much as during the past half hour. Permit me to expend a parental sigh of relief. Daddy, I don't know what you're... Jerry insisted? Well, yeah, I wasn't wearing very much when Jerry picked me up, so... Oh, don't get huffy. I'll take them off. So, you're one of Jerry's girls. Me? No! But don't I wish. He's some guy. She's an X-rated movie star. And a very nice one, I might add. A what? Where'd she go? Don't ask questions, just to get out there. Look with the window. Just go, would you please? And who might you be, other than the celebrated Jerry? Before I answer that, sir. Uh... Yeah, he's her husband. He is not. He's my roommate. Oh. Oh. I'm afraid that parental sigh of relief was premature. Dr. Bowers, I think I can explain most of this. You're not explaining anything, Daddy. It's not what you think it is. Jane, dear, I believe it's customary to have these matters out with the man. Lila, would you make her a cup of coffee? She makes excellent coffee. Sure. I don't want coffee. Come on, honey. I'll straighten you up. Let go of me. Listen, that's some dad and some roommate you've got. I'm wow. not interested in anything you may have to say about my father or anybody else. Well, you're going to hear it if I have to hog tie you to make you listen. Don't, don't you touch me. I know karate. You don't know anything. Well, that's pretty much it for Lila. She's just a harmless kid who got beaten up by her boyfriend, had no place to go. Of course, I did expect to have her out of here by the time Jane got home. Which brings us to the subject of your roommate. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're, you're going to find this hard to believe, sir. I know I did it first. All right, fine. Instead of arresting you, he just offered you a place to sleep and he didn't lay a hand on you. Oh, not that I didn't offer, mind you. Well, I'm sure that was very admirable of him. But you're still mad at him. Well, that has nothing to do with you, but just for the record, I can't stand the sight of him. That's bad, huh? Well, I feel that way about Charlie sometimes. Like last night. But I don't know. Now that my back's all fixed. Separate but equal, huh? Well, you young people get stranger by the day. Tell me, has it worked out? No, Jane's moving out tonight. In that case, your troubles are over. Not really, I'm in love with her. In that case, your troubles are just starting. Jerry! Dear? You don't know the half of it. Dear, are you here? Hi, Kitty. Who are all these people? I know you! Everybody, this is Kitty Murdoch. Kitty, I'd like you to meet Dr. Horace Bowers, a chiropractor and very wise man. Alila McGinnis, a professional um, acquaintance. And Dr. Jane Bowers, my roommate. Your what? I'm sorry, Kitty, but we might as well get it over with. Jane's my roommate, shortly to become my wife. Over my dead body. If necessary. You creep! You lying, hypocritical lola! Hear, hear! You keep out of this all the time I was cooking for you, and you were living here with her, and, um, now, and... Just, uh, just wait a minute. Everything's true except that and, and stuff. All the time Jane and I spent together in the apartment, we never... Well, we never. Yeah, and not likely to either. That's terrible. Are you too sick or something? You obviously dig each other. You live in the same house. That's not only terrible, it's immoral. You expect me to believe this? Mm-hmm. Well, don't you think it's immoral? Under the circumstances, I'm a little ambivalent. I'm, I may not be as smart as your fancy doctor friend, but I'm smart enough to know I never want to see you again. We ought to hire a hall. Didn't you read my note? Uh-huh. That's what convinced me. You must be Jane's father. I'm Wyatt Foley, the man she's going to marry. How do you do? Have you met Jerry Fraser, the man she's going to marry? Oh, of course. Jerry and I met... I'd like to have three children. Unless, of course, you're a kook on population control, too. Oh. Uh... Jane? Is this true? 
Oh, Wyatt, I... Jane, it was all settled. You were going to move to my place and stay in Mother's bedroom until we were ready. Jane, I am waiting for an answer. Hey, I know you, too. You're the leader of that group that hates men. When's the next meeting? Oh! Fink. Tell Mother she can have a room back. Well, Fink! Jane! Let her go. I told you she was the mm. class enemy. Well, I love well her. You, don't you think you do because she makes you feel guilty and rotten? Well, I'll make you feel more rotten than she ever could. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you say is true. I'm a masculine supremacist. I'm sexually bigoted. I'm a chest-beating, insensitive gorilla. But just think what a challenge I'd be to reform. Jane, I'm crazy about you. I can't live without you. Marry me. Marry you? You are married. A uh, slight misunderstanding. Soon to be remedied. I rented that apartment to a married couple. Mr. Sorensen, the next time you see us, we will be married or you can evict us. I will, too. I got nothing but decent, hard-working, God-fearing tenants. Jerry, I still believe in all the things Women's Liberation stands for, and I won't be bullied, and I, I won't be pa patronized, and I, I won't be treated as property. And... Oh, maybe there's hope for me and Charlie. Yeah, how's your back? That good, huh?